I'll call us to order at 7.20. Do you need a minute taker? Five. Would you like me to do that? That would be great. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm not sure what happened to our minute taker. That's ah, matter. that's yeah. the second. It it isn't it Jen? Doesn't Jen do it? No. Usually Sean is here for us. Oh, so right. must just been. Huh? Well, she's away. Maybe she might be, yeah. All right. Send well, thank you. Is there any public comment? No? All right. None. Okay, so we have minutes from 523 meeting in the consent agenda. I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. All right. Allison? Is there a second? Liz will second it. All those in favor of approving the consent agenda, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Okay. Uh, our next is executive limitations discussion of the board retreat. Um, so on that, August 22nd is the date we're shooting for. At 2 p.m. until a later time is essentially the, the details we have right now. Um, some of this we talked about at the last meeting about some trainings that I'm trying to coordinate and Nicole <coughs> Lise has been, who is the executive director of the Vermont School Boards Association, has been fairly busy with the goings on in Montpelier lately. So um, I haven't been able to actually get in touch and talk with her. And Harry Frank, who is the education leader for the VSBA, is leaving his post. So he's sort of on his way out. Um, and Nicole's got all this stuff going on in my field here, so it's just been complicated to actually try and pin down the trainings and the date for the trainings. Um, and that will drive the length of time we need that meeting to run. If we can get the four hour board responsibilities training scheduled in that evening, we're probably looking at a two to seven or eight timeline, because that's a, that would be four hours, so that takes us two to six and then probably one to two hours for the sort of carousel, all boards portion of the meeting where we do some sort of combined work together and we talk a little bit about the year ahead and the year, look a, a year back. Um, I'll actually get to look a year back this time. Yes. Um, not just days. Right, not just days. <laughs> um, so you, you could probably, I mean two to eight is pretty safe and we have to work dinner in there somewhere as well. So even if we get the four hour training, um, even a half an hour for dinner only leaves an hour and a half for the rest of the work to do. So it's probably what we're looking at. Okay. All right, so stay tuned for more. Uh, we're working on the location as well. Torturelle is where we were last year, um, which had great food and the one room was nice, but there's no breakout space. So when, when each board kind of goes to its own place, luckily we had good weather, so some boards could go outside but it didn't work really well, and they're not available on the 22nd, which looks like the best date for people to attend. So we're exploring options for location. We're looking at Camp Common Ground, which could accommodate us, um, and looking at some other places. We're actually looking for a place that doesn't require that we purchase their food, because we can have our own food service program, mm -hmm. make lasagnas and prepare the meal for us, and then we're awesome. sort of serving our own purpose a little bit, mm -hmm. which makes a lot of sense. So more details to come, but if you can just sort of pencil in uh, August 22nd, 2 to 8-ish, pending that agenda, sort of getting ironed out, that'd be great. Okay. All right. Next item is a discussion on the New Haven lease agreement. Um, that was enclosed, but Patrick, I'll let you take it. Yeah, so there's a couple of lease agreements, and both agree. so I think towns are... Towns are getting to a point where they're maybe a little bit anxious about current districts ceasing to exist and a new district sort of coming in and what's that mean for the agreements that are in place and how do we sort of do this and um, so that seems to be prompting at least from these two towns um, with which we have agreements some interest in talking about the agreement and possibly looking at some adjustments to those. Um, for the New Haven lease agreement, the way it currently stands, the school district owns the property under which the town hall sits. 
but they do not own the town hall. Right. Yep. So there's a fairly complicated agreement between the town of New Haven and the New Haven School District in terms of who's responsible for what and what percentage of this kind of repair does the school pay, does the town pay, the heating, the etc. Um, I think there's some interest in the town wanting to also own the land that's under the building. So we're looking at, um, uh, I think what, what I would propose is for Howard Alden and I, as representatives of this board, to attend a New Haven select board meeting to just hear what sort of more details about what they're interested in doing. We can then sort of think about what are the implications of what they would like to do, and then come back to this board and say, here's what they'd like to do, here are the implications, and possibly here's a recommendation for you to consider um, as a way to move forward. The other option would be that you as board members alone could go to the New Haven's left board and you'd end up having to work with Howard and Alvin and I to understand the implications. It, it just sort of, I think, streamlines the process a bit. I think so too. I'm, I'm just curious if they have a planning commission. I'm pretty sure New Haven has a planning commission. They would probably be the ones that would be like in the nitty gritty of that, I would think, probably. Might be. I think. I think it was the select board that requested. So the, the presence. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, yeah. Right. So the way the contract reads, um, either party prior to June first can sort of initiate an interest in renegotiating the agreement. And so they did submit a letter prior to June first saying we'd like to talk about this. And I think it was the select board that sent that. It is. Um, so that'll be our first point of contact. And whether they kick it to a planning commission or somebody else, we'll, see we'll have to happens. see. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, would it be beneficial to have a member of New Haven from this board also attend with you, or not? It certainly won't hurt. Um, it was, yeah, I think just sort of a respect for the amount of time that you guys need to take doing that kind of stuff. But really, the first meeting is going to be just trying to understand more about what it is they're interested in. We're certainly not going to make any commitments at that meeting other than to just look into it. Yeah, gather information so that we can go back and kind of do our homework and understand what that would mean. So we haven't been disinvited, so we, we could go just to also listen. Yeah, I don't think it would be a problem at all. Um, and, I mean, you could even go as a representative of the board as well. I mean, not in an unofficial capacity, you could go as an official capacity. Mm -hmm. That's what I was going to ask, if that's not to so August 1st right now I know is a date that works for all of I um, Howard's got to look at his calendar and see if August 1st at 7 o'clock works for uh, him. That's fine. That works. So yes. Alden, Howard, and I know we can do their August 1st meeting. So if that's something that works, it's fine. Yep, me too. Okay. Yep. Yeah. 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 Sounds like a plan. You know the time. Though. Which August 1st meeting was that? That's the New Haven, New Haven Select, Select Board. Board. Select Board. Don't worry, Caleb, your time will come. You guys are next on the list. <laughs> All right, so the next item is the discussion on Brown and Robinson agreement with the town of Starksboro. Yeah, so similar situation but different in um, Starksboro. And this is more, so it, the New Haven agreement, the New Haven board, the New Haven school board, and the New Haven Select Board both recognize the advantages of having this conversation and reaching an agreement with this MAUSD board as the board that will sort of inherit whatever um, agreement is reached. Um, the I think perhaps, and you might you guys might have talked about this tonight, Caleb, so you might be able to share a little bit more on this. The Robinson Agreement's a little different in that there's a, a, a piece of land um, on which sits some number of solar trackers that belong to the school and some number of solar trackers that belong to the town. 
the lion's share, I think two thirds, three quarters of the solar trackers are at the schools, and the smaller portion, I think, are the towns. Is that about right? Yeah, uh, the larger portion, the school has contracted for. Uh, the smaller portion are actually owned by the town. So right. the school owns none of them. The school leases in the sort school, of a lease agreement. Yeah, the school kind of leases them. But yes, the, the majority of the trackers there are sending energy to Robinson. Right. And I think the interest of the town of Starksboro is to own the piece of land that all of the trackers sit on? Or at least, I think they're at least looking to just, you know, own the, the chunk of land that theirs sit on, okay. at least. I don't think that it's critical on the other side. It was not on our agenda tonight, and because we went over with our boiler discussion, we didn't insert okay. it. I'm not sure if it was supposed to be on our agenda, so we didn't yeah. really take any action on it tonight. I yeah, didn't certainly fine. say that. Um, but yeah, that as I understand it, because you know, Lou and I didn't both go meet with the select board just for the you know quorum reasons, but um, yeah, my understanding is what they're really looking to do is secure the the Maybe for simplicity, they're looking to get the entire parcel, but doesn't seem you know it's true you'd have to subdivide it if you want to just give them right. Um, so I think the the direction I think that that agreement is going and the conversations there is I think the current Robinson board, at least Louis at this point, has an interest in working out whatever the agreement changes are going to be in this year. Um, so that it doesn't include as much the work of the SD board. Um, but they'll have ironed out whatever they're going to iron out. In some ways, um, if something like the town of Starksboro owning the land on which their trackers sit simplifies some things. If they own the land their trackers sit on and the school owns the land that their leased trackers sits on, then there's no need for that agreement because they're not really sharing anything anymore. So that simplifies some things. Um, so I feel like there's there's a path towards something that can make sense there. So I think for the Starksboro board to see that through this year could work. And the fact that Louis is also on the Stark, not Louis, but um, Caleb is on yeah. the Starksboro board, you'll have sort of both hats on anyway. Yeah, I don't think that we're, I think we would be, if, if there was a concrete reason it was better to do it differently, I, Think would be amenable to doing it differently. I think yeah. it kind of fell under the category of housekeeping stuff that uh, I know that this action on the town's part to make this request was prompted by Adam Luigi at um, as a county regional planning. So that was the sort of genesis of the request, um, and that was sort of something I think that they kind of went around trying to identify situations they saw as as confused in terms of land ownership the, the, as things transitioned from Act, you know, Act 46 districts right. to unified districts and took that kind of upon themselves. So I, that's kind of where it started. I got that letter from from Adam through the town. And, uh, but exactly how it gets resolved and whether it's completed with the Robinson board or involves this board, I think. There's some options. Yeah, some options I definitely look to use. For. And mostly my interest in, in wanting to make sure it landed on the agenda tonight was just to get it on everybody's radar, that there's conversations starting to happen and we'll sort of keep you abreast as things develop. And, you know, there will be... The reason we haven't reached out to these folks in terms of the agreements we have pending becoming a single district is... Um, we have a number of contracts out there that are going to have to be revisited. Even if the, everything stays the same, but we change the the entities that the agreement is between, there's a bunch of contract work. So we were going to sort of look at all of that at the same time. But this interest has come from these other individuals, so I think we can respond as the interest is brought up from, from those folks. Try to work out those issues, and that's less we'll have to do that road. Because you can see the in the work plan a little bit later was slated to be time to sort of assume the the debts, but also um, talk about some things. Yes, any other questions around either of those? Okay, we'll keep moving on. We do have executive session if we need it. People don't feel like we need it. We don't have to have an executive session. But um, it is 
anticipated around the labor relations agreement being ratified? Are you feeling in that you have some you are some in need of some more information to, to take action in a little bit, or have you heard enough? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I, I read through the packet, so it was the information that was sent out. So mm -hmm. there's additional information, but it doesn't seem pretty straightforward. There's another. There is a, a contract that you didn't receive in your packet that you would be acting on today as well. Okay. So if you want to see that because it's not ratified, um, we would have to be in executive session for you to see that. So that would be a reason to need executive session. But if you don't want to see it or don't feel the need, then we don't have to do it. So we did a quick recap. Um, Kristen, who chaired the professional staff work group, and I chaired the executive session. We did a quick recap during the executive committee session. I think, I think a lot of folks were here for that. Um, and we kind of touched on that. Welcome with what they yep. came up with. Either way, it's totally crucial. Yeah. Are you okay with that? I mean, I know people who are working on it. I mean, I'm fine. I guess that's the same thing. Yeah. Maybe we should just quickly do it so we're all on the same page. Good idea. Okay. All right. So we are in need of an executive session under Title I, BSA 313A1. The labor relations agreement. Um, discussing this agreement in public session would put the district at a substantial disadvantage because we have not ratified this yet. Um, so until both parties ratify this agreement, we must keep it in executive session. So to have any further discussion, in-depth discussion about details, we'll need an executive session. So I'll entertain a motion to go into executive session. I move we go into executive session. All right, Caleb. I'll second. And Jen. All right. All right. So, um, as we found uh, a disadvantage by discussing this in public session, we are making a motion to go into executive session under T Title One VSA three one three A one B to discuss labor relations agreement. Um, and we'll invite Patrick and Howard to come in. And Kristen. And yep, board members can stay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, 743. All right. Okay, so now we're down to board management and governance. Update, um, the SD board work plan was included in your packet. Nice colorful one, if you look at it online. And you'll see that I moved the develop communications engagement plan a couple of columns to the left to be within those first six months because there's an interest in working on that tonight. And um, I think an even up, more updated, because I looked at this today, I was thinking the, the bottom left hand cell which says work with union leaders through negotiations to merge seniority lists is essentially accomplished through the, the language which speaks to the district. Um, so I feel like that is something that can be shaded differently. And what about the concluded Conclude. negotiations? Right. And that was pending tonight. That's mm -hmm. Assuming, oh. so there's ratification on this board's right. part yes. and then assuming ratifications on the teacher's part, um, then we get to shade that one too. Cool. Um, I was wondering, sorry, I'm not raising my hand. Krista. Um, I think we should consider moving the negotiations council to the left as well. Because if we're going to start building the budget and, and you're like have time, time to do any kind of work before we start negotiations again, the fall is the time, right? Except that we don't, so we don't need to start that work this coming fall. Right. It'll be the following fall that we get to start that. So I think as long as we have a negotiations okay. council in place as of July 1, 2018, mm -hmm. then if anything, at the earliest, something that summer might begin. Right. Okay. So then we have yeah. our council in place for that work. Well, wait a minute. So 
So where we start for 2018, 2019, and we already have the contract for that. Right. Okay. Well, but won't we start negotiations for 1920 at that time? I guess what I'm saying is I'd like, what I would, what I'm thinking is that it'd be great to have a group having conversations about issues outside of the beginning of a negotiations process, which seems like it would be this fall, or no? I mean, it, it can be whenever this board wants to have a council and meet and start having those conversations. Mm -hmm. um, I would say the, the important thing for sure is as of July 1, 2018, that this board have a negotiations council that they've identified to do that work. Mm -hmm. So should that work begin with teachers and support staff in the summer of following July 1, 2018, it's organized to do that. However, however much earlier than July 1, 2018, you want to organize a council to begin doing homework, is totally fine. I'm just I'm thinking back to Chris's comments about um, the parking lot. parking lot mm -hmm. for thoughts to do things um, certain things outside of the pressure of the negotiations. So and that could be a different committee. That could be a labor. That's what I'm thinking. Right. Labor. Labor. That's what I was thinking about. Yes. And maybe yeah. it could it's be just a committee. Maybe it's right. 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 If that could just be a labor be a standing yes. committee yes. for the. That's time exactly that what I'm referring to, right. and we talked about that a lot within the support staff group. At least <laughs> that last meeting was that there are these bigger picture issues that would be great to just talk to philosophically. Um, I'm trying to think of the one that was a really good example. Um, but anyway, so, you know, not in negotiations mindset, but more in like, you know, how should we handle this together? Or, or how should we, you know, talk about this together? Not really solve it, but talk about it. So yeah, that's what I was more thinking about, the forming of, of a labor, labor, labor management. management group yeah. and having that group form so and, that and, 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 you know, maybe quarterly conversation. I mean, it doesn't have to be. I think it. I guess perhaps tonight, perhaps not, depending on what kind of action you want to take on it. But if this, if this board appointed a person or two to that labor management mm -hmm. group, mm -hmm. then whenever that group starts to take shape, this board already knows who's going to be joining the work. Okay, and it may be that if we do a post, I keep saying post mortem, but if we have that sort of like, how did it go? I mean, I was thinking some of that, and I know Kristen um, had a similar thought, but that some of that would happen with the staff um, as well. Um, that maybe at that time we could talk about this concept with them. Like again with the support staff group, there, was, there were several people who were like, whenever that happens, you know, let me know. Mm -hmm. So. I don't know that we could appoint somebody tonight because I think that would be needed to match an item. Yeah, we should have warned us that yeah. Yeah. But we could so put it on our retreat. For the retreat yeah. agenda. agenda to, mm -hmm. um, so in terms of, I guess we could talk about, do we want that to show up on the board work plan? And if so, I think probably we just want to have a motion that says, let's add that as um, a cell within that first six months after the organizational meeting column. Um, and then we'll, that'll be officially on the work agenda. And then we can get it into an actual meeting agenda in August. And I don't suspect anything's going to happen between now and August. Oh, no. so I think that'll be okay. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I didn't mean to sound you really eager to talk about it, but I don't want to lose it. I, you know, we, yeah. we, we were very committed to this. Yeah. Um, and I think that we have to have a conversation. Some of those things talked through it without the pressures of a solution yeah. needing to be derived. Yep. Um, so Proactive. I like it. It sounds good now. <laughs> <laughs> so, Allison. So, um, Along the lines of training, I thought um, a training that would be good for us to do would be a racial implicit bias training. I heard a really good um, segment on Vermont Edition about um, implicit bias and racial bias in schools at the moment mm. because of some particular things that have happened. And um, it sounds like it would be something really beneficial for us to do as well.
So I guess what I, what I would, and I think that makes great sense. I just think in terms of if we actually do take the action that Krista's referencing, mm -hmm. or if we actually do take the action that you're referencing, is best by motion and mm -hmm. vote of the board, then it's right. really clear, yes, right. it's yeah. it's the board's wish right. to do something. And not an individual. Right. Okay, so if I, so um, we have on the work plan discuss committee needs. And so this is kind of part of that. Um, but stating that it's a particular committee, does that go on the work plan or? Well, I think what we, right, so that, I mean, there lies the question whether it goes on the work plan or not. Um, or like is our, you know, will our work plan begin to morph into specific, into more specific actions? And in that case, yeah, I would right. think you would want it on there and the motion might be to, um, to form a, that committee. Right. To so appoint I'm, members to that committee. And that I'm trying to. Like, to channel my inner Val Gardner, mm -hmm. um, and I can hear her saying, "Plan the work, work the plan." Right. So I would, I would thinking like establish working committees would be what we need to add to this, mm -hmm. and then take action at the next meeting, a step, a, coming with a list of here's our standing committees and here's who's going to do it at the next one. Is that right. what you're thinking? Yeah, so that's, I guess my point in saying that was if it's work the board wants to do, it ought to end up on the work right. plan. Mm -hmm. right. And then we use the work plan to build agendas right. to get the work done. Right. And right now our items are... And we had discussed... Like 10,000 feet. Right. Right, and this feels like it's getting... Closer. So, are we ready to start doing that? Because then we're going to be building this out more, right? Mm -hmm. Which I think is okay. I mean, okay. I tend to be a fan of being a little bit more specific than not. So, I think adding some specificity in here is not a bad idea because then it provides a lot of clarity in terms right. of what the next agendas are going to look like. Um, which is something that we'll talk about at some point just the, the whole process of building agendas um, is an interesting one. So the more we can we can build a work plan and use that to build agendas, the better. Uh, because otherwise, what tends to happen is lots of ideas are thrown out, and then it's the responsibility of central office to catch them all and make sure they get in an agenda. Um, and just, there's just potential for something to get missed doing it that way. But if we have conversations and we get it in the work plan, we use the work plan and build the agenda from that. So six months after our organizational meeting is September, is that right? Did we meet in March? Was that our... Right, so it's within those first six months, right? Those are the things that we're working to accomplish. Okay. So... To get it on the retreat agenda, I would, I guess, make a motion to form a labor and management committee at the... August retreat, or to appoint board members to that committee. At the August retreat. At the August retreat. And to add it to the work plan. Yep, and to add it to and the work plan. And to add it to the work plan. Under human resources work. All right, so you're making that a motion, is that correct? Correct. All right. Uh, Second. All right. That solves that. <laughs> All right. You need to discuss it. Does everybody understand? It's adding it to our to-do list, and it's um, that by adding it, then that puts it on the next agenda to take some action around appointing members for that committee. Well, and forming committee. For right. Right. And putting people on it. Yes. Okay. So right now the action that is about to be voted on is to add the action of forming a labor management committee to the work agenda. Right. And then at the next Whether or not that actually happens is decided in August. Right. And then whom those people would be would also be decided in August. Right. Okay. Anyone have any questions? Everybody understand it? 
All right. All those in favor of adding um, the establishment of a labor and negotiations committee to the board work plan, then constituting the next step of it will be added to the agenda to to establish that committee and appoint at the next meeting, if the board so desires. Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? <coughs> Make a motion that we add under governance work um, racial implicit bias training. Um, within the column of the first six months after the organizational meeting. Second. Is there a second? So do we discuss after we have a second? Yeah, you have to have okay. a second to discuss. A second. Oh. All right. Now you can discuss. So would it be to actually hold the training, or would it be to no. seek out the training in the to, first six months? To develop. To develop. OK. A, maybe a time Like You know, we have the budget development over. training, legal and ethical operations training. So this would be another one to, to, to add to the list. Right. Just for Would clarity. We need to set up a committee to do that, though. But sorry. No. So, so the the trainings that are listed here now, the intent is mm -hmm. for those trainings to take place within the first six, six months. months. Mm -hmm. So, if we're adding this training to that list, I would think that would be the same assumption that that we would be looking for the training to happen within the first six months. Which would be September, right? Or before. I just think that's a really tight timeline. Right. To, to so let um, I'll amend, make a friendly amendment to my motion. Mm -hmm. Am I allowed to do that? I don't we remember. We have to vote on the motion and then. I don't remember. remember. You can retract your motion and make yeah, it. Yeah, you can take it. Can I ask another question first? So, so is this is this training for staff and with the idea that. That it's, board members it's may training for be no, no, it's training for the board okay. specifically. And so, um, what it, whatever it was that you had heard about this was speaking specific. I'm trying to figure out how our role as board members might be influenced by racial um, bias and um, and yeah. What I can do is send you the link, and um, you can listen because there was a gentleman who's um, part of an organization. And he, his first comment when they got to him was, I would, um, they were talking within the context of staff and principals, um, and he said, I would suggest, and I had already thought of it, but he said, I would suggest that boards engaged in this work as well, mm -hmm. so that they are on the same page as teachers mm -hmm. and principals and other administrators, um, because, and um, it's, there's a lot, it's, um, yeah, it, um, it I'm up losing, <laughs> yeah, so, um, <laughs> I, I, there, um, there are really good reasons to do this, um, and it helps to inform, it actually would help to inform our ENDS policy, policies, um, review, and a bunch of other things to make sure that our students are getting all of the tools that they need. Jen? So I, I think I have a little bit of a concern about the timing as well. It looks to me, looking at the work plan, like we have a, an ambitious amount of training that we're getting done, I guess, in August. Um, do we have a plan? And, and you're welcome to tell me to save this till after the motion is handled. It's, more, it's tangential to the motion. But I mean, do we have a plan for how all this training is going to happen? Is it all going to be at the retreat? or? So that's what we uh, we had talked earlier about. It's been just you mm -hmm. were at the executive committee, but it must have been just but, uh, before you got uh, here. I don't she think wasn't we were at here the last, last meeting. The last meeting, and okay. we talked about it then. 
So okay. the, um, the, the board roles and responsibilities, the budget development training, and the legal and ethical operations training are trainings that I believe are conducted by the VSBA. And I've been, I've been playing phone tag with Nicole Mace, who's the director of the VSBA, who's been really busy with the, the goings on in Montpelier lately. And Harry Frank, who is the education sort of director of the VSBA, who sort of has managed these trainings, um, is re has resigned, so he's no longer either isn't there or is very soon not going to be there. So there's just kind of been a lot going on at the VSBA, so we haven't actually connected on uh, which of these trainings we can get coordinated. The goal is for the board roles and responsibilities training to happen at the retreat. Um, because it's a four-hour training. The others are two-hour trainings, um, and so those could happen at more regularly scheduled meetings. Um, and there's actually one other um, training here that we should probably talk a little bit about, which is a policy governance training, since we've adopted policy governance. I've talked with Val about her availability, and um, she's pretty wide open in August right now as well. So depending on what happens with the board roles and responsibilities, if this board was so inclined to have that policy governance training as well, that could fit in there. So that's probably something else that we may want to consider adding to the work plan. Krista? Patrick, I wonder if something like this would be interesting to float by the district strategic planning world because there's the whole equity goal or action work group and this really fits into that as does probably some other things. Mm -hmm. I wonder if... Um, Interestingly, this specific topic, racial and implicit bias, has been the focus of the VSA, VSBA conference mm -hmm. for the past two years mm -hmm. in the spring. Right, right. So the May, the the May conference of... Right, the yeah. fall one. So it's been, yeah, that's right, because this past year they came twice. So last year this group, I forget where they're from, but, but last year the group came to the spring conference, they came back for a fall conference, and then again to the spring conference. So three consecutive VSA, VSBA conferences have, have had a focus on racial and implicit bias. Um, so a number of <coughs> superintendents and school board members have I don't know if I call it a training necessarily, as it is sort of a. They've done their own thing though too. Right. Created their own. Right. Rebecca Holcomb was in that um, on that edition. So I think there are some resources out there. Yes, definitely. But it's a, a, the timeline, I think, that right. you mentioned. Right. Yeah. Right. Liz. Um, definitely policy governance for one. And then whenever this fits in the schedule, we could do it, right? And that's the idea is it's not necessarily August, but whenever it works, it works. And also, I was wondering, when we were doing the negotiations training, is that going to be just specifically the group that's doing that? Or is that a whole board thing that could be like next summer? I mean, not like necessarily right now, but is that a training? You mean the Labor Management Committee? Is well, maybe not just now. them, but oh. I think it's oh, right. Because the when the like I mean I know that's not an immediate thing but at some point that would be another mm -hmm. training that I was thinking right would the whole board do that since we are a small board is that how we're kind of going to do trainings versus like little groups going and doing trainings but everybody on the board gets the same I, I think it's probably wise to divide into smaller groups rather than try to have the whole board because I, I think it gets difficult even though we're only so many people, it gets diff difficult to have that many people even pick a meeting date like, as an example. Mm -hmm. So if, if we can task a small group to go out and do things, that kind of takes the stress off of the whole group, the whole group kind of getting burned out all at once. <laughs> so um, I think small groups our useful way and then have them report back to the board and then you know people aren't meeting out. Right. And it depends on the training. You know, legal and ethical operations, that might be a good one for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but negotiations training maybe is more applicable to those that will be small, doing like negotiations. Small, yeah. Okay. So all right. So motion if I'm 
I'm fading fast. I'm just about to retract and make a new motion. Yes. Oh, are you? So if I retract, do we need a second for the retraction? No, you can just. Okay. I think you can. It's just like pulling off your own sticky. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, you can do what you want with that sticky. <laughs> it's your sticky. I retract my motion. All right. All right. And I would like to make a new motion. Okay. That we add racial implicit bias training um, within the governance work group under the first 12 months after organizational meeting in that column. So under the first 12 months. All right, is there a second? A second. All right. Okay, any discussion on that motion? All right, all those in favor of adding under the column that's first 12 months after organizational meeting, racial implicit bias training as the governance, as a governance work group. Do I have that right, Allison? Is that how you said it? Or just in the governance? In the governance section. Work, work section. All right. Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? All right. All right. That brings us back to the policy governance piece now. Which Val said is about a 60 to 90 minute training, just to give you a sense of what you'd be saying you're looking for if you go that route. Would, would that be, Jen? Would that be similar to the training that Val did with the boards last summer? Or is it a different? That was last summer, wasn't it? We it was two summers room. ago. I think it was. I think you're thinking of the Act 46 thing. No, Val no, did a no. policy governance training. In this room, which it was in this room with administrators. With maybe with oh. Harry Frank or with someone else. Was it there? Oh, uh, Fitz. It was before me. Fitz. Yeah, it was before you. It was a. S so not summer. Like it was a while ago. I think it would be along that lines because that's what that was. Was policy governance training and all boards came and administrators. Uh, administration was here. Yeah. Well, I think you won all the boards. Yeah, yeah. There was some requirement around that. <laughs> okay. So, um, I'd like to make a motion that we add policy and governance training under the first six months after organizational meeting column. in the governance work section the work plan. Okay. I second that. Alright. Okay. Any discussion? Um, can, Jen. can I put it as just sort of an asterisk that the board may need to evaluate within the first six months how to reasonably accomplish all this training that may actually require another month or two. I mean, I just, I think that if we try to put 20 hours of training in August, we're all really going to, it's going to be difficult. <laughs> then it may be that we need to take some, you know, I, so I, I, and I don't know which one's more important. They're all super important and I, I love training. That's what I do. So I'm not anti-training. I just think that like, you know, we may have to like fight some of it on this and some in September and some in October or something, you know, just to be realistic. So just because in that first six months column, I assume that we could, as a board decide that like we're gonna count October as still being okay if we need to do that. Or maybe well, and, and I would say that um, so it could be said. I added it to that column specifically because if we can't get some of the other training for our retreat, yeah. we might be able to get that training for the retreat. Right. So and I don't it know how there. to prioritize it. Again, right. I mean all of those are important. You know, yeah. we yeah. obviously want to be operating legally and ethically. We need to develop a budget. We need to know how we're governing. Like oh, it's all important. I just think that we may have to be we have to might have to be flexible in the yeah. six I think we're all realistic in yeah. thinking that we know we're not gonna get all right. of those done. Right. The good news is we are our own 
board work plan police. Right. <laughs> and if, you, if it happens that time, you can't get something done. You just make a plan of when you're going to get it done and keep moving forward kind of thing. So there are times when something's on the work, on the work schedule that we don't get done. Right. We just make a plan of when we're going to get it done and keep moving from that point. So I think, but saying that out loud is helpful that we all realize <laughs> Okay, if we're not doing it, we can do something about it. All right. All right, well then, if there aren't any questions, all those in favor of adding policy and governance training under the first column, the, the first six months after the organization, in the governance work section, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Right. Okay. All right, we'll keep moving then. Now we're down to um, develop a communication and engagement plan action, and there is a handout. Yeah, so share. interestingly enough, what just arrived um, to me in the mail today was this pamphlet called From the Boardroom that you guys may get as well, which is a uh, pamphlet put up by the VSBA, and as I was thumbing through it, I saw supporting effective community engagement, and I thought, well, how timely, we're going to be talking about that tonight at the SD board. So I thought it would be good to just um, make a copy of this piece on here uh, about effective community engagement for our use in this conversation or future conversations. Um, so this was something that we had discussed at the last meeting that was, uh, that the board was interested in moving that up in our sort of work schedule. And so here it is. We didn't talk a whole lot more than simply saying we should do this sooner rather than later. So there's not a great deal of direction right now as to how we could or should go about creating an engagement plan. So it's pretty wide open at this point. My hope is that we can start to get some sort of direction and then we can think about um, how we move it forward once we have a bit of direction. Are there, Kristen, are there models out there of things that have worked well? Or, or sure. even I wonder if other um, districts that have merged in the past year, you know, what they've done, because this is a, seems like a prime opportunity. Um, so I'd just be curious to know what other folks have done to kind of roll it out. So the conversations that I'm hearing, it's interesting because I've had folks, so if you, re if you recall when, when our articles of agreement were brought to the state and then approved and then sort of became fairly public, they, ended up in many ways becoming kind of a model for many other districts that followed us. Um, and one of the things that became sort of part of that model was our inclusion of considering local um, councils, I forget the mm -hmm. community advice. councils or something, <laughs> advisory, advisory councils advisory. or something along those lines. And so I've had people asking me, like, so what are you guys doing with that? <laughs> you haven't done anything with it yet. Right. <laughs> So the conversation's out there. I don't know. I haven't heard back from anybody. Hey, by the way, we figured out something great here. It is. So um, people are talking about it, but I don't know of anyone that's really landed somewhere that they're sharing at this point. At, at our at the Bristol board meeting, I asked Kevin. He may have shared this with you, but I asked our principal Kevin Robinson, kind of what you know. Uh, I was just thinking specifically about ways to keep the Bristol community connected with the bigger district, and he had shared with me before, and then he reminded me of that sharing <laughs> of this of what that had been done in a previous district he worked in that was made up of these seven different re, you know geographic regions kind of like our five elementary schools you know all sitting on this big board and um, when the agenda would come out for the big board meeting you know like maybe two weeks prior to that a representative from each of the districts would go to that region or in our case that school and whether it was tied to a PTO meeting or some other, but it, um, 
and engage the community and okay here's what's coming up at this big board here's where we can seek your input here's um, you know here's sort of what's happening so you know that's one of those ones where you have no idea what the participation level would be but it was just one example of a way to keep that individual schools keyed in somehow mm -hmm. <coughs> and maybe involved in what's happening at this table and I think when I think back to the Act 46 study committee, um, and a, a couple of you at least were on that, and you can sort of chime in too, that was the intent of those community right. councils was to be that link between the local community and right. the board looking out for the greater community. Um, yeah. Jeff. So I, I definitely look forward to like, having the conversations about those councils, but I also think that in the past, and, and I have done this and I've seen us do this in the different versions of the boards in this district that I've sat on, I think that community engagement feels like this big thing that's really hard to do. Um, like we planned, we had a community engagement in Moncton and we planned it for months and like, yay, it was really cool, but then for the next two years we went, Oh gosh, that was a lot of work. Like we did that, and it was really hard, you know. And so I would love to challenge us as well as we get when we get into this conversation to think about what are ways that it can just be much more natural, you know. And I cannot for life me remember who I had this conversation with. It might be somebody sitting at this table, but they're telling me about some board where they met twice a month, and once a month they had like this meeting, and once a month they had like a coffee or you know like the other meeting like didn't have an agenda. It oh was, was it Val? Was it Val? Yeah. Yeah. See okay. someone, yeah. I was like some of you guys know this story, but like is there a way that you know we can do things that don't require four months of planning and mm -hmm. you know 25 volunteers and yeah. you know materials like can it just be easels more accessible <laughs> markers and I mean that was great but you know if it takes four months to plan it yeah. then you know you're just not going to be doing it that much it's not the same as you know just sitting down talking for 10 minutes at a PTO meeting that's already happening. Right. right. Or I mean, that's sort of what I liked about what Kevin was saying, is it's this thing that's already happening, and there, there's just a representative that's going. I mean, the part that I was suspicious of is who would come, because I've seen the turnout just for PTO meetings. <laughs> um, but it's already happening, and so. Yeah, but are there other community, and this is just, like, as opposed to PTO meetings, but are there other community events which are, where people are routinely kind of mm -hmm. coming together, like book clubs, it's like rubbish. where we could just like join and go. You know what I mean? Like, is there like those opportunities that we're not maybe aware of or thinking of that it's like, mm -hmm. hey, I'm gonna, you know, not invite myself, but like, mm -hmm. yeah. sorry. So I'm, I'm sort of like remembering that Val handed us something at the policy and governance committee meeting. There might be some examples in that stuff. And I don't have my binder, but maybe I should be, I'll look back into that because it seems to me she gave us some examples mm -hmm. of, of something. It's also, and I reckon that nobody's had a chance to look at this yet, okay. but this says that, so the first paragraph says, with a call for effective community engagement, the VSBA has begun to work with Public Agenda, which is a nonpartisan nonprofit organization, to bring resources and supports to Vermont schools in order to carry out this important component of governance work. So there are more resources in the works right now that I think will help we're, inform we're, this conversation. We're, we're part of the resources. There we go. <laughs> so, we're chapter one. So this is, this is kind of an excerpt from... Um, uh, a public engagement kind of resource packet yeah. that they're working on putting together. It sounds like maybe over the course of the summer, I, I read through this quickly, so it's okay. it speaks in here somewhere. It says the VSB is pleased to announce that public agenda will be a keynote at this year's annual conference on October 20th. Mm -hmm. so that's the last paragraph on the other page. So put October so, 20 down on your calendars. That's the annual meeting. Right. And like more. And maybe you'll get some implicit bias training as well. If so, Jen, Jen had. Ah, there you go. Did you have your hand up, yes. Jen? Yes. Um, yeah, but I don't know. Okay, Allison. Um, I would just like to 
piggyback on Jen's thought of doing two, and I know we all are, have a lot of things going on, but having two meetings a month where one meeting is the board work, where we do this stuff, and at all of the other board meetings we've had tonight, our review process of our meeting is, did we engage, right. have community engagement? And every month it's no, 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 because we don't have the time. So to do a second meeting where it is the board doing community engagement and figuring out a good way to do that um, would be, that's how I envisioned it with Act 46. Um, and also working with local councils, however we decide to do that. But I think we as a board do need to be connected to all of our local communities together. Um, and one person going to Starks, Starksboro, a person going to Starksboro's PTO meeting isn't necessarily the best way to capture that. But um, I, I, I do like the idea of doing that. And maybe it's every other month we have a community engagement where the board, you, you provide food, they come kind of thing. Well, and, and we don't necessarily like, all need to be in. Right, right, you know, right, we right. Can do right. We try and, and I guess we run into quorum issues too. <laughs> right. But, um, so the only, I guess the only cautionary note I would put out there is if, if we meet once a month to do the board sort of work like this meeting, once a month is this board or some group of it getting together for anyone from any of the five towns to come and be a part of. And on top of that, board members sitting around community councils that meet with some sort of regularity. And then we have the committees that we've been talking about. And so that notion of everybody doing everything that Don was speaking to earlier now starting to mm -hmm. ring a little truer. Maybe thinking about is that other meeting of the month community council time, where it's you're going out to those communities that you're representing rather than having one place where everyone from those communities is expected to come. Is that maybe the second meeting? Right, right. just as, as, as we're splitting up the work into the different smaller groups, it's just, yeah, obviously being reasonable is huge. And if, if maybe, because I know we talked about having some committees are always there, some committees are only sometimes there for a little bit while you need them. So maybe our community engagement committee could be like, everybody's on it for, for a little while, for a couple months, and that's when like you do your piece and you do that. But it's a rotating committee or something. It seems like there's a ton of options. So I don't think, I don't know. And the other thing I'm really interested in is if we did something like that, that we could spend, or whoever does that, we could spend time in different schools. Because mm -hmm. I know some of the, you know, you're going to close down our school, no one knows right. what our school is like to our community. I haven't been in um, Starksboro, or I haven't been in Lincoln, so I think that might be kind of cool to see other folks from other towns share, uh, have an interest in, you know, a particular school. And we did that with the Act 46 committee. We rotated our meetings through the different schools. Because yeah. we started out coming here and then realized it started to be that my local school conversation. So we did start, we rotated around. Yeah. And it, that was good to do. Sir, uh, just two comments on that. One, I know that at, in Champlain Valley School District, um, they did a tour of they started their meetings once they last fall at a different school mm -hmm. and did a full like tour of that whole spot. I would say though, I found the fact that we constantly traveled last year really exhausting with Act 46 and was so excited when we were at the supervisory school spot. <laughs> so I would like to not only travel. <laughs> Just throwing that out there now. That was every week. Yeah, yeah. No, just, 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 never, I never knew where we were. But we tried the time. revolving board meeting yeah. as well, and it was complicated. It was. Yeah, complicated. But I think for us, that especially for next year, having something at each school would be a good idea.
So we have an action to develop a communication slash engagement plan. I don't know. Oh. I'm not feeling like we're particularly action oriented at the moment. No, I need mean, to talk about the next step. <laughs> I think an action could be, I think, exactly that. Next steps, determining a next step for what information do you want to gather, um, like what direction do we want to go with this? Do we want to include the, we, we sort of have in the work plan right now, um, those community councils as something separate from the community, the, engage, the community engagement plan. They sort of had somewhat of an identity of their own. Um, so we should maybe figuring out, do we want to include them in an engagement plan um, or not? Do we talk about those first? What kind of resources? Um, we can do a little more digging into this organization. We can look at resources from uh, the AOE as they're working on rolling out resources for districts that are merging. There's their stuff sort of evolving there as well. Can you remind me, did we... Um So in promoting Act 46, we said we are committed to forming count. No. Some, something. Okay. We're committed to considering <laughs> forming. Okay. Because <laughs> so I would say we better do that first. And here we are considering. So We're considering. <laughs> we have fulfilled the obligations of the Act 46 Articles of Agreement <clears throat> because we're considering. But we should probably land on whether we want to have those or not. Andrew? So could we, <coughs> under the guise of community engagement, ask the community via survey about what are the best ways you'd like to be engaged? Do you want to show up to a board meeting, a, a separate board meeting? Do you want us to set up a table of coffee and donuts at the town dump and talk to you on Saturday morning? What is it that you would, how would you like to be in touch with us? Uh, yeah. I think it generates some ideas that is sort of over five towns, it seems like we got some similar ideas that mm -hmm. we have a plan from that. And we now, we actually subscribe in a unique way, I think, to Front Porch Forum, right. where we can now, we pay a fee per month, but we can, out of central office, send one communication that goes into all five towns. Yes. Rather than Yay. having to sort of reach out and yeah. touch right. up what it says, yes. can you please send it from Moncton, Bristol, <laughs> <Crystal. laughs> right. so New Haven. It costs a little bit of money, but then the message com comes from the school district as yes. opposed to yeah. Adora in Starksboro or yeah. 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 any individual Erica. person. Right. right, yeah. And and across timing, too. Yeah. yeah. And if we did the survey, would we be able to, I mean, I don't know what sort of time frame we're looking at, but is it something that I'm thinking of, you know, going out with kids when they go back to school, like, you know, you get, like, that big packet of mm -hmm. information when your kids go, like, the first week of school. Mm -hmm. Like, can we include something in there of, you know, this is something we're doing is, I, I guess, what's the turnaround we're looking for as far as, because I think that's a really great idea, and what better way to engage the community than engage the community and right. how we would like right. you to be engaged. I mean, engaged. the survey so, we just did was, I mean, on the name was engagement. Right. right. But, so... Absolutely. I mean, I think, how do we broaden, though, that yeah. group of people? And I just, I think that that is our target audience, right? Are the parents of, I mean, obviously the community, but parents that have kids being served by the schools are more likely to be mm -hmm. engaged by nature. So I think that... Realistically, I think the start of school to have a survey go out is probably the earliest it could go anyway. Mm -hmm. um, you know, to make it happen as soon as quickly as possible, Within a sort of within reason, would be some probably some small group of this board would need to get together between now and the August retreat and develop what the survey would be. This board could look at the survey at the August retreat, say, Yeah, that looks good. Then we send it, and that's already August 22nd, so we're a week or two before the start of school at that point already. And then we get the survey out, and we'd hopefully be looking at results of the survey at the September board meeting. So. I like that survey idea. Jen? Jen? You're so good, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I, I like, I, so what I like, Patrick, is the idea of, that I think that we, you know, in keeping with the idea that we can't all do everything and that discussions are hard in large groups, that I think that we probably need to move towards having a subcommittee or whatever we want to call it to work more on community engagement. Um, 
obviously recognizing with the formation of any sort of subcommittee on community engagement that that is the responsibility of the whole board so you don't get off the hook by not being on the committee. But that, you know, that, just this the part, if we, that, you know, I think that we can make more progress um, just like on some of the other topics where we will probably end up having committees. So, so, so can sorry. we do that tonight? Because yeah. we have an action to develop a communication slash right. agent plan. Can we take an action to if form If there's a motion. Meeting? If you have a motion in mind. Okay. And we didn't form one last month. No. no. I was just going back into the minutes to make sure no, that that didn't have No. Uh, uh, policy or governance. There was no such motion. Yeah, it's so, Jeff? I would be happy to make a motion okay. to form a communication slash community engagement committee. Do you want it to be called a committee, subcommittee? Sure, subcommittee. I second. I hope you're getting this all because my yeah, notes yeah. are so all over. I got it. <laughs> communication all right, slash, slash, slash community engagement subcommittee. Yeah, I guess it should probably say and instead of slash. That would sound better. <laughs> and SLA. <laughs> All right, and Andrew second. Any further discussion? All right, all those in favor of forming a communication and community engagement subcommittee, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Should we open nominations for membership? And because it's an official committee of the board, it needs a chair as well, I think. Yes. Are there, well, are there volunteers before we nominate? <laughs> <laughs> Caleb, are you volunteer? I'm volunteer. All right. Andrew, you're a volunteer? Oh. Jeff? <laughs> Jeff's volunteer. All right. I think that's that is a good number to start out with, and if you feel like you need more work, then we we can uh, we can officially appoint someone else. But I think now that we have the volunteers, we can appoint the volunteers. If somebody wants to make that motion, I move to appoint Jen Stanley, Kayla Elder, and Andrew Martin to serve on the Communications and Community Action Committee. I second. Right. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Oh, oh, in I, favor. Just, I just want to make sure that it's community engagement. Communication, yeah, Communication action, right, and right. community right. engagement. So, yeah. And you what you were trying to say. So all those in favor of appointing Jen Stanley, Caleb Elder, and Andrew Morton to the Communication and Community Engagement Subcommittee, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Thank you. All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> is, is it acceptable for us to decide amongst ourselves the chair and let you know? Or, because you said we need to have a chair. It's an official subcommittee, so, so we probably need to have a chair. As chair of this committee, I have authority to appoint a chair. So is there any one of you three who would like that position? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'll do All right. that. As chair of this <laughs> this uh, board, I appoint Caleb to serve as chair of the communication and community engagement subcommittee. Committee. Okay. <laughs> and would you would the subcommittee write its own charge to be presented to this committee? Yes, they would. <laughs> you. You come back to us with your recommendation of your work. So directed by the chair. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing full well that the full board will be responsible for that, but I think that after all this discussion, it's pretty clear what this board is expecting from that committee. You have an idea. All right. Any more on this? We're past our time. 
So I will forward, as I collect resources on community engagement, I will forward them on to the chair so that you have anything that I have in terms of what's available. As soon as we figure out time to meet, we will want it. That moves us down to an action item to ratify the 2017 to 2019 ESP negotiated agreement. So, Jen, all right, Sarah's moving that. Yes. And Jen is seconding. Is there any further discussion? All, right. all those in favor of ratifying the 2017 to 2019 ESP negotiated agreement and authorizing me to sign as chair, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. That one's done. Next. To ratify the 2017 to 2019 professional staff negotiated agreement and to authorize me as chair to sign um, is the motion. So moved. Allison. Second. And Megan. All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor of ratifying the 2017 to 2019 professional staff negotiated agreement and authorizing me to sign as chair, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Please remember that the, until these are both ratified by both sides, then it's not a public, uh, there's no public discussion. Once it is ratified, the document will become a public document. and be out of there, but until that point, it's not. All right. Okay. Just meeting evaluation. Oh, we're the paper people on this one. <laughs> it's not. Um, no, it's no not link. online. It's we're paper. Well, now there is a there is a link. Governance. Oh, is there a link? Now we're policy governance. Should yep. we be doing the one online? There's a link. There's a link. Do it. Oh, yes. Chris, I can type it in if you want. That's okay. I, I got it here and. Okay. What is the level of engagement of all board members? It's high as high. Mm -hmm. Was the agenda followed? Yes. yes. Um, what went well? Did you miss the questions? Yeah, the, this is a, uh, the yeah, one for this one. is a simpler one, so. Anything else? We mostly stuck to our time. We started about five minutes and we were going to be fine. Okay. So we did just stick to the two hours. What suggestions do you have for ways to improve future meetings? I find it really difficult to have this meeting after the other meetings and to not be able to be here for the start of the meeting because my other meetings haven't ended yet. Um, so I don't know how to resolve that, but it's just challenging. I don't have a whole lot of creativity left at this point in the night. Anything else? Okay. Yeah. All right. Is there any other pub public comment? No. How about a motion to adjourn? A motion to adjourn. Okay. Andrew? Is there a second? <laughs> all right, all those in favor of adjourning this meeting at 9.06, please say aye. 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 aye.